Hey guys, it's Rob from Hype Up and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be unboxing and taking a closer look at the Godox FC16 triggers for Canon, Sony and Nikon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button that notification bell to be updated of any new content that we release. Leave down in the comment section below any questions that you have about the FC16. Give the video a like. Follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. So I've got with me here today some triggers. These are the FC16 Godox triggers. Probably one of the lesser known ones because Godox have their X wireless system triggers, which are the X1, the X2, and the X Pro. So these FC16 triggers there's three models available, Canon, Nikon, and also Sony. And they're basically multi-function triggers. So what I mean by that is that they're used for a bunch of different purposes, including connecting to strobes, so flash studio strobes, also connecting it to speed lights because you can see they have a built-in hot shoe there, and also being used as a remote shutter release. If you're familiar with the Yongnuo brand, they are quite similar to the RF603 triggers or transmitters. So let's take a closer look and unbox these ones here. Now, some features, firstly, um, it's 2.4 gigahertz wireless triggers. So that means they have a 100 meter wireless range, which is great. It doesn't support full high speed sync all the way up to one over 8,000th of a second. It's only up to one over 250 second. There's different compatibilities with different cameras depending on the model you get. So if you get the Nikon one, uh, we'll throw up the models up on screen as to which ones it shows on the box here that they're compatible with and also the same for Canon and Sony. So let's open up the box. Okay, so the first thing we see here are a bunch of cables and this one here I'm opening up is actually the Nikon version. Now there's three cables in here. Firstly is a 3.5 to a 2.5 mil cable. And you've got Nikon cables here as well, which are 2.5 mil to the N1 and also the N3 cable for Nikon. You've also got an adapter here. So this is a 3.5 mil to 6.25 mil jack. That's in case if you're using this with flash strobes. So some flash strobes have the larger jack to connect this to. And also just the transmitter and the receiver. There we have it. So here we have the transmitter and so it's the other way around. This one here is the transmitter and then the receiver here is the one with the hot shoe plate. And you can see there's a few switches on the top of both of these devices. So that's basically setting the channel that these devices will actually talk to each other with. So you can see there's one, two, three, four and you basically just, you can leave it at that setting there which would basically be channel one or you can flick the switches and just match those up on both devices here to ensure that they talk to each other. When you actually place some batteries in here and you hit that test button, there's a light LED indicator here that will flash green to ensure that you have that connection there. And you can also obviously test that on your camera or your flash if you mount your flash here and that should fire it off. Now there's a cold shoe mounting plate here for the actual receiver here. So you can actually see there's no actual metal plate there. But however, on the transmitter here, it's a hot shoe. So you can see it's a silver plate there and it's a single pin hot shoe. So despite these actually being made for specific models, so Canon, Nikon or Sony, the actual hot shoe here is only a single point. So that means it's only like a manual trigger. So you're not actually going to be getting TTL functionality out of these triggers here. They're basically just a standard trigger, a dummy trigger perhaps that just sends the signal across um, to flash or trigger the actual camera if you're using these as remote shutters. Now just taking a look at some of the actual physical features here, you've got flash mode there, you've got off mode, and you've also got camera delay. And on the other side here, you've got PC. So that's your PC sync uh, connection point, which you can use some of these cables to connect to. So that's a 2.5 mil jack, just like that. Firstly is the transmitter. Transmitter is the one with the metal hot shoe there that you can mount directly to a camera. So I've just got a Canon camera here. There we go. And then you have the receiver, which has the built-in hot shoe here, and you can mount a flash to it, just like that. Just make sure both are on, and you've got those green LED lights flashing. And when you hit test, you should be able to test to see if this is actually working as well. There you go, fired off. 
Now you can test this out with the actual camera as well. There we go, so that's fired off as well. So you can see there you have that wireless connection to shoot your flash off camera, which is great. Now you can obviously mount this to a stand if needed. So I've got a stand right here. The bottom of the actual receiver here has a quarter inch thread. So you can mount that directly to a stand. Just make sure that your stand also has a quarter inch thread at the top. Now you can actually use these a lot easier if you're using a bracket. So some sort of flash bracket that you can mount on. So that way you can actually use lighting modifiers and we actually have a review of the new Godox S2 bracket, which we'll link up above. Let's remove that and we'll show you the different ways on how to use this trigger set as well as a shutter release. So using this as a shutter release, we'll just remove this from the flash. You're using this in reverse. So basically you have a transmitter here in your hand because you have that test button there or the shutter button that you'll be using. And then you can mount this receiver to the actual hot shoe plate here of your camera and use some of the cables that are provided in the box. So there's a bunch of different cables depending on what you need it for. So this one here is a 5D and what we need is a C3 cable. So this is included with the Canon set of triggers and you need to plug the 2.5 mil jack into the camera port here and using the other end into the shutter port of your camera. There we have it. Now in your hand, you can actually just go ahead and use this as a shutter remote which is great. But first thing you need to do is just make sure that you've switched the mode on the side here to camera and also doing the same on the receiver. There you go. You can see that that's firing off there as a wireless shutter remote. This is great, especially if you just set up on a tripod, perhaps you're in a studio environment and you're using this in a fashion shoot and the subject's not moving around too much and you want them to be in that same position, but just changing poses. This is great to use so you can direct your subject without having to be behind the camera or looking through the viewfinder. Nice and easy to use. This also obviously has other practical purposes such as uh, self-portraits. So if you're standing in front of the actual camera um, and you have no way of hitting the, the shutter, you obviously have this wireless transmitter that you can use to fire off. Now it also has a delay mode, which you can set on the transmitter to delay. This just gives a time delay on the shutter. So when you press that, there's about a five second delay or so, depending on your camera and the actual delay modes that your camera has. And that's the delay mode there. So nice and convenient to use as a remote shutter. So the other way to actually use these triggers is to connect this to a studio flash strobe. So I've got with me here, the brand new Godox DP403. This is a brand new flash from Godox in 2020. What we'll do is we'll link up above our unboxing and review of that one if you wanted to take a closer look. Now to get this to work with a flash strobe, firstly you need to set the transmitter and receiver to flash. So you just need to position the side button here and you need to get the flash cable. So the flash cable is the 2.5 mil to the 3.5 mil and you need to plug that into the flash port here of the actual receiver and you can plug this directly to the back of the flash. So most studio flashes have a sync port at the back here. This one here is a 3.5 mil jack. So you won't need to use any adapters with this cable. However, they do provide an adapter here, which is a 3.5 to 6.25 mil. And you can plug that directly into the back of the flash. You can wrap this around, usually around the handle or something, just so it's not hanging from the back of the flash there and switch the flash on. And just to test this, Make sure that the channels are set the same on both the transmitter and the receiver. And you can actually now press that test button there to see you can actually fire off the flash. That's another brilliant way to use it. Now on top of that, you can actually use these flash triggers as multiple off-camera flash uh, firing off multiple flashes. So if you have multiple speed lights, doesn't matter what brand they are, the actual hot shoe on the top of the receiver here is universal, so it doesn't matter if you are using a Canon, Nikon, Sony, or other brand flash, as long as it has a single connection point or a connection point here, it'll fire off regardless of the model of the flash here. And you can purchase several of these and shoot groups of flashes basically, as long as they're all on the same channel. So if you're using one, two, three flashes, then you can actually fire this off all through the one receiver. Now they don't actually, they don't actually sell the receiver separately. So that means that you'll have to buy these in pairs and you'll just have some spare, you know, transmitters here 
in case you use them for a shutter remote or if you have multiple cameras, so there's some use to that. Um, but these are relatively inexpensive triggers in general, so you're not spending too much money if you're wanting to operate groups of flashes. The only downside to these triggers is that there's no high speed sync support up to one over eight thousandth of a second. It only goes up to one over 250, 250th of a second and also there's no TTL capabilities. So these are manual triggers only. But if you're used to using manual controls on your flashes or your lighting, so like most studio flashes are all manual control and you have the time there to set it all up, um, then these are perfect triggers because they have so many different uses and you can jump across all the different lighting that you have to use these triggers and operate all your flashes. So that was just a quick unboxing and look at the Godox FC16 triggers. If you're after more advanced triggers such as their TTL range, which are their X series triggers, including the X1, the X2 and the X Pro, we've got a comparison video that we'll link up above. For more videos just like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button if it's helped you in any way, hit that notification bell to be updated of any new content that we release. Leave down in the comment section below any questions that you have about the Godox FC16 triggers and also follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.